I'm trying to take some measurements off this SLR digital camera. This is a full-size Nikon camera. And the reason why I want to get some measurements from it is so that I can build my cradle for my pan and tilt bed. If you seen my other video on my pan and tilt bed, I was creating an automatic um, camera mover. And you can catch the video. I'll put a link in the corner if you miss that. Anyway, what I was trying to do is get some measurements on this full-size SLR so I would know how big to make the cradle. I've decided to remake the cradle after I got a comment from one of my YouTube buddies, Hankus, and he let me know that he thought that the center of gravity should be um, in line with the camera, and I totally agree with him. So I'm going to go to a design like this. I copied this off the internet, and you know, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. This looks like a pretty good setup to me. So other than making it direct drive, this is going to be the setup. I was just going to make it out of uh, simple aluminum and then some other miscellaneous materials. For my prototype, hook my servos up and see how it works. So anyway, that's what I'm up to next is uh, just getting some measurements. You know, I think I'm, I want to make this at least six and a half inches wide to clear this full size SLR. And then the middle of that would be about three, well, yeah, about three, I guess. So I'm going to continue on with that and then we'll do something else. I'm going to approach this cradle building a little bit differently. I'm just kind of winging it as I go. Normally I like to make drawings and plan it all out, but this time I'm just kind of going to fudge it. I've still got an idea in my head, but I'm going to just do it freestyle, if you will, because I am doing this in aluminum now, and I'm not used to working with aluminum. And you know my skills are limited I don't I can't weld it I do have an arc welder but you know I'm not very good at using it so I need to use mechanical fasteners and my cutting tools are limited too so I'm just gonna start building this thing the way I think it should be, should be with the materials I have on hand and then if it works out I can make a final one if this one needs to be redone First cut. See, I want it three inches tall, plus it'll overlap on this for a half, so that'll be three and a half inches in each of those. Oh, I thought I'd mention, remember this video I did of this device that made the water turn red or blue when it came out the spigot? Well, just recently it died. Um, it could probably be repaired, but, you know, it's getting damaged with harder water, so I'm just going to throw it away. So, I don't know, somebody look back on that video and tell me how long this thing lasted. I think I only paid like 10 or $15 from it, so... It's a pretty good little thing while it lasted. I'll probably throw it in the junkyard and then 10 years down the road when we're doing a what's in Steve's junk drawer we'll find it.
Hey, look. It'd be okay for a prototype. So this is this. Let me go get the camera and see how it looks. Now, I'll point out that most SLRs aren't this tall. This has a, a big battery pack here on the bottom. This is an external device. But, uh, yeah, I think this will work real good. There's a, a tripod socket there that I can extend out with uh, more metal. Or just put it right there for that matter. And my pivot points will be right at the top of these. That'll fit a full-size SLR. Very good. Now I gotta make the outer shape there. As you can see from this drawing, this part is rather large. And the reason why this is large, I believe, is so you can flip this cradle right upside down and the top of the camera um, would be able to fit in this area. I'm going to lower mine down though a little bit and have this closer to the deck. I don't plan on turning mine all the way upside down. I'm going to make my side rails five and a half here. So that one's set for five and a half. Follow these up. I don't know guys, I still like to use a manual manual file when I file these parts up. If I got a big job to do I'll use the grinder but it's been suggested before in the videos that I use the grinder but you know when I'm taking burrs off I think it's just easier just to use one of these. The grinder is a bit much especially for aluminum. Nice and square. Okay, well this is what I have so far. Now I have to drill holes in the tops of these and we'll go ahead and put some uh, some bolts through there with some washers for a pivot point. Well I drilled some holes in the side and then I took some bolts and hooked these two together and this is what I have so far. It's kind of like the picture. I'm going to have to get some different bolts. These are just temporary because they're not threaded all the way down. And so I'm going to have to get some quarter inch by whatever these are, probably two inch that are threaded all the way to the end. And they have those. I just have to get them. And then I can use um, you know, another nut here to capture this. So I think that'll work good. The camera is going to be mounted here and swivel up and down like this. And then this is going to be on a, another axis that I have to drill yet. So let's come on. I like it. Well, I've been trying to think of how I want to mount the camera onto this plate here. And the easiest way would just be to drill a hole in the center and then put a bolt up through to the tripod mount here. Now this will not be the camera that will ultimately be on this, but it is um, good for size and um, bulk, I guess. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, give you a look at what that's going to look like on the bracket itself. So I'm just going to drill a hole up through here and put a washer on this side and see how that goes. 
So that's next. So I went ahead and I marked centers. This first center is going to be for the the camera mount. And this one is going to be for the pivot point for the, the spinning. So I'm just going to go ahead and drill both of these with a quarter with a quarter inch hole. I'll probably start out with an eighth inch first. Do that next. This is a mount for a tripod that I plan on using. I have to add a couple more holes, so that's what I'm doing now. can hang too. Like I like it. Alright guys, well this is what I have so far. The camera's just sitting here flopping around because I don't have the servos on it yet. But uh, this is the aluminum construction that I've been working on today. And you can see I've got my tilt and my pan here and I plan on using this tripod to keep the thing on. So what I have to do next is I have to figure out a way to mount servos and I'll probably use two servos for the pan part and you know I'm not sure how I'm going to mount these on there yet. I'm thinking about a gear drive to slow the action down and as well down here using a gear drive. I think that'll work much better and that way I can run four servos and not put such a strain on it. So this will be the size of the SLR that we'll leave on here and you can even hang this if you want to from a jib or something like that the other way but the way I plan on using it for now anyway is just a tripod mount and uh, if I let it go it just kind of falls down because it's not perfectly centered but I think if I took this battery pack off it actually would be but you can see how it's going to work out. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Have yourself a good one. Don't forget to check out What's in Steve's Junk Drawer, the new series. I'll put a link in the corner here. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.
Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.